So it's so nice to be here with you today. I wanted to um, talk about um, a topic that's near and dear to my heart, which is how do you create infectious action? Uh, a topic that's been important, not just if you have the old spice guy at your feet, but also if you're in Egypt right now, um, or in a company like Donors Choose. But instead of talking to you about sort of pathways or roadmaps to create infectious action, I wanted to tell you a story. Um, is a story around um, myself, uh, who had a really skeptical perspective on social media. Two years ago, this was my per perception of social media. The more time we spend on Facebook, Twitter, Foursquare, etc., uh, the increased narcissistic uh, behaviors we exemplify, the more stalkers we have, and the less pa patients we have. Uh, now, this wouldn't be so bad, but my husband loves technology and, and social media in particular. And so we would have uh, arguments over the family dinner table around sort of how you spend your time and the importance of social media in our world. Uh, all of this changed for me, and I started to shift the way I saw social media and that opportunity to create infectious action um, based on a class I was teaching two years ago at Berkeley called Creativity and Innovation in Marketing. And at the end of this class, I realized that most people don't remember all of the things that I think are so important in the classes I teach. And so I crowdsourced the final day of content. And I said, what did you remember from this course? What did you retain? And most of my students sent me a bullet or two of what they remembered from the course. Uh, one of my students, Robert Chotwani, sent me an entire PowerPoint deck. And I wanted to share that deck with you today. Robert Chotwani works at eBay. And this deck is called Using Social Media to Save Lives. At the beginning of my class, just before the class, about six months, his best friend, Samir Bhatia, age 32, was diagnosed with leukemia. And um, Samir is a Stanford undergrad um, uh, graduate, uh, social entrepreneur, just, just like you, just exactly like you, starting businesses, having all of the power in the world, charismatic, smart, ambitious, creative, and wanting to do good in the world. Uh, he got married to Raina um, about a year before getting diagnosed. And they were in India when he got hot and feverish, went to the hospital, and was diagnosed with leukemia. When they found out that he was diagnosed with leukemia, they reached around to their friends and family and found out that another friend in their network, Vinay, was also diagnosed and battling leukemia. And so they teamed up with um, the family of Vinay. Uh, and I'm just going to share with you in silence the deck that Robert shared with me. Instead of treating this like a friend having gotten diagnosed with cancer, they treated this as an organizational challenge. But instead of a revenue goal, the goal was to get 20,000 South Asians into the registry within weeks. They built out two organizations, Team Samir and Team Vinay, and they had corporate leads, marketing leads, regional leads. They built uh, two websites immediately and told the story of Samir and Vinay so compellingly that you felt touched by their lives. And the call to action was abundantly clear. They executed like crazy. Uh, Robert spent three hours, three precious hours, crafting an email that not only told Samir's story, but told it so that if you didn't know Samir and you read this email, you felt as if you did. 
And he took that email and he spread it. Uh, they spread it through Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn and you name it. Uh, and through that effort, um, they established a strategy. And that strategy harnessed both social media as well as traditional media. And each one of these links on this website is live. So if that you hear the story and you're working at Cisco and you want to run a corporate drive, you just double click on the corporate drive link and a dummies guide for how you run a drive pops up. And everything on this is cut and paste. So if you cut and paste on the uh, text in yellow, you'll get a letter to send to John Chambers. Dear John Chambers, I want to run a drive this Friday. This is what I need. Um, cut, paste, send. And then a thank you letter. Thank you, John Chambers. We ran a drive on Friday. This is how many people we got in the registry. Thank you so much. This is what we need next. Cut, paste, send. Social change in a box, making it so easy for people to act. And people did. People created Facebook ads and popped it on their Facebook pages. People that didn't even know Samir or Vinay. People made videos, uh, popped them onto YouTube, compelling people to act and just do a cheek swab, which is so easy to do. And the result in 11 weeks was 470 bone marrow drives, 24,611 South Asians registered, and a perfect match for Samir. And Vinay found a good match as well. And he blogged from the hospital telling his story because he felt connected to 25,000 people. And he even put his transfer onto YouTube video uh, so people could see it's not nearly as scary as they think. And the lessons they learned were so powerful. The power of a clear, single focused goal, the idea of reversing the rules, doing what other people don't do, telling a compelling story, and most importantly, designing for collaboration so that others can act. At the end of the story, though, Samir relapsed within three months of finding the match. He fought hard, but sadly passed on. And that's Samir and Renee. He celebrated his life by sharing his memorial service with the world. Um, they put the memorial service on a live global webcast, and 6,000 people shared in it. And Vinay fought hard too, but Sally passed on a few months after Samir. As many of you know, the chance of a match taking is not just about how good it is, but how quickly you can get it. But the reason I'm so different today after hearing this story is that 266 people were matched based on the 24,611 people put into the registry in just those 11 weeks, and that's just in one year. That's 260 people with hope and time for life. It's incredible. <laughs> and the final thoughts is that most revolutions are sparked by the actions of a few ordinary people, and your biggest asset is a clear idea, a clear mind, and a large idea. So to take that ignition point, find it, and light it. And so when you talk about creating infectious action, I hope you remember this story. Um, we created a model that surrounds the story and it highlights four simple skills that if done in conjunction, uh, allow campaigns to take off. The clarity of a single focus goal, not two goals, not multiple goals, just one single focus goal. The idea of making people look, doing something unexpected telling a story, thinking about stories as assets to compel people to stay with you, and then architecting for others to act. The dragonfly effect refers to this idea that small acts can create big change. When the core idea, what started the initiative, is deeply meaningful for you, and we find research that shows that when it's meaningful for you, that that is a resource not dissimilar to time and money that gives energy to others and when all four wings of the dragonfly are coordinated. So I ask you, what is your single focus goal? How are you making people look at you? How are you making people fall in love and tell your story? And how are you architecting so that others take your goal and make it their own? So I wanted to conclude with saying this is not a story about Samir and Vinay. It's a story about what's possible when you connect meaning to social media and create infectious action to make the world a little bit better. And with that, I just wanted to say, go. So thank you so much for your time.